EFL. Now, there has been a lot of criticism for the current Super Eagles and that there's no player from the NPFL in the Super Eagles setup. What's your opinion on that? I don't have a problem with the Nigerian player not playing in the Super Eagles of Nigeria. I've never had a problem with that. I think it's actually, uh, I'm sorry, I want to use the help of my own opinion. Um, national teams are built on the best players anywhere. It doesn't matter if they are playing under the case. That's it. So if you sit down and you say, oh, you don't have Nigerian players, the league players in the national team, it means they're not good enough. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. The best player today in the league, on Sunday morning, the best player, Monday morning is in an aircraft going to Afghanistan or going to even in Sudan. So build your lead, make it attractive. A league where salaries are not paid. A league where um, players cannot cry to those who administer the game to say they are owing us. Atlanta has not paid eight months. Sunshine has not paid for almost a year. And you, you call it, and you are saying the super egos should do what? Get the best. I don't care. Let whoever comes. Pick the super egos of Nigeria from Nigeria. I don't have a problem with that. Or what do I want? I want to. See, I want to see good football. I want to see results. That's all I want. You go back to Clement Bessau. When Clement Bessau came, we had a few players outside of Nigeria. We can pick them. And after a year of his stay, how did would you find a player from the league team in the national team? The Iroas, the Okechukos. The son at the hour, all of them had gone abroad. There was nobody from home. And those right here were also going to South Africa and whatever. The Egwe Puis of this world, they were living. The Rupert and Gabriel, they were living. So that's please let us allow, when you give a coach a responsibility, allow him to do the job. If he's not doing the job well, fire him. And that's why I climb up for the sack of General. He wasn't giving us anything, he was giving us a take. I mean, I, I couldn't see beautiful football. There was nothing. And when he went, I said they spent too much time dealing with talent. They would have fired him a long time ago. When a coach, you give a coach a responsibility, let him pick players from anywhere. And when he's not doing well, please fire him. Or there should be a policy that says, hey, coach, as we're coming, oh, the national team of Nigeria will be made up of home base players. We are forgetting that it's a chant on base super egos. Let us concentrate on that. The super egos are set to play Ghana um, on Friday. What's your, what, what do you think about the game? Nigerians, some of them are saying the super egos did not really do well at the Nations Cup because they crashed out in the second round. And Ghanaians also are also struggling. Um, many people are really scared that these super egos, there are times when you expect them to really live up to expectations and they don't. But what are your expectations about that game? I don't have any expectations at all. Um, this one thing is certain if um, Ojo Egalo and Co don't qualify for this World Cup, they may never get to play for the Super Eagles. Mm -hmm. There are some players in that team who have never been to the World Cup. It's the biggest competition that any footballer wants to play in. It's a dream for any footballer. People talk about motivation, we don't need to motivate them. A ticket to the World Cup is more than motivation. I just spoke with a Ghanaian friend and he told me that the Black Stars of Ghana have a surprise package for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asking him what is the surprise. He said, going to the world of placating Ghanaians who were disappointed with their performance at the Nations Cup is a non-motivation for them. Nobody needs to tell Jordan and you who has come back from the COVID is going to play uh, that you need to be the Super Eagles of Nigeria on paper is a big team anytime, anytime. When you look at the players, the caliber of players that we have, yeah, um, my my belief is coming from what I saw at the Nations Cup. I saw a Super Eagles that can play football again. I saw a Super Eagles that remember that we play from the wings. We are Eagles. And the Eagles reflect their wings as it were. That's what I saw on that Ibrahim. The short period that he had to, to, to tell this team. People talk about Ibrahim. He doesn't have he doesn't have time. You must when you come as a coach, every coach has got a philosophy. To imprint that philosophy it takes time. It's not it's not an overnight thing. Players come from different. I mean, they, what what Osime is taught in Napoli 
is not what in the start in Leicester City. They are playing under different coaches. You need time with the coach to say, okay, this is my philosophy. This is how I want you to play. A coach does not teach technique. He goes in there to say tactics. This is what I want us to do that will win us again. As it were. So probably goes, like I said on paper, they should go there and deliver tomorrow. But football is never, never one plus one. On a lighter note, what, what's your favorite um, super epic tech side? You could bring from the 90s to the 2000s. Favorite tech side? 1994. Mm. The team that went to the Nations Cup and conquered, and the team that went to the World Cup in America under Clement Fensal, led ably by late Stephen Kershaw, the boss. The best I've ever seen. Uh, I'll talk about the ones I saw. Yeah. When I was grown, old enough, not the one in 1980 that I only saw on TV and what I read. Yes. In 1980, I was still somewhere like anywhere. I would not have a TV. <laughs> now we move on straight to Manchester United. I don't know if you would like to talk about them. It's been a very poor season for them. And if you were to advise the people in charge at Old Trafford, who should they go for? Eric Ten Hag or Mauricio Pochettino? The hug is more likely for me. Mm -hmm. you know? um, the problem with Manchester United is, is the face. Some people don't understand it in life. Sports, human beings, everything you do there is a face. There are things you will do that ordinarily will be so easy. But at times, the same things you want to do, they won't work. Mine is going through a phase. Go and bring the hug, Mourinho. But I go on retire at Las Vegas. It's the same thing. We are going through a phase. And until that phase is over, we used to have a Nottingham Forest. Where's Nottingham Forest? They're gone. There was a Chelsea before um, 2K came. They went through a phase. There was a new group in Thomas Tuchel. And they went on to win the Champions League. Won everything. They missed out on the world something. You know, as it were. Was it no? They won. They won the world. They missed out on the. They lost it. Eh? The FA Cup. Cup. Yeah, they missed out on the FA Cup as it were. It, that was the same Chelsea team that couldn't play on that fracture. Mm -hmm. So a new group should come to alter the face that we're going through. Yesterday, Paul Pogba said he has wasted five years at Manchester United. He was talking like uh, the local panel. He was talking the rubbish mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you earn five hundred thousand pounds or more every. Every week, yes. And you said you will wasted five years. You should return that money because it's one of the problems of Manchester United. If, if I were a coach, it's the first to go. You know, I I, would, I don't know why we wasted time uh, allowing Kante to go to Chelsea. Not only Kante from Leicester instead of getting that uh, that uh, enemy we think called uh, Maguire. You know, <laughs> you know, those are all the kind of players. Um, if you get a proper coach, you won't buy a Maguire. What did you do? I look, I look at the statistics. Who is Maguire? You made him the highest paid player. You made him the captain. Oh my God. I still can't explain. You know, as a football administrator, I know what I will go for. Uh, some people say that uh, the, uh, the owners are the problem. It's not true. The problem is football on the pitch. And that's the problem for Mourinho. It didn't work. Mourinho did not lack money. There was money. Mourinho left. They brought in who? Only. Well, let's go on Sosha. Sosha was never, shouldn't have been a Manchester United coach. He should be coaching the academies at best on the 23. It, it deceived everybody and they had to fire him. Why not get a coach? You know, Conte was waiting. Get a Conte. Firebrand coach, a man who will bring water out of stone. A man who lives, who dreams football. They went for Ragnar. And the next thing I heard was, ah, he was the mentor of coaching. He was the mentor. And I said, if you want a coach, get a coach. What are you doing with an interim coach? Oh, he will stay for six months. We'll bring, that's where I afforded the money. Mm -hmm. You can't, if you fool me the first time, you are a fool. If you fool me a second time, I'm a fool. You know, you are running football business. You want to make money. Mind you, get into the Champions League has become a struggle. Why is not as that? Winning is in the DNA of the average Manchester United fan. And here we are. A lot of places are built up. It takes a miracle for money to play the Champions League. Mm. Look 
at the team. Players are there. It's not about players. Sometimes when we win, it takes one man, a Ronaldo. Some other times to make him look like someone who is letting out to play football. It becomes ordinary. That's what the team does to you. When the chemistry is proper. Get it Ten Hag, let us build gradually. We must not climb this tree from the top. That's what a lot of Manchester United fans are looking at. If we climb this tree from the top, we will crash it. Um, journalism lost two great legends, uh, Dr. Sonny and um, Dr. Fabio Lamico. How would you react to the losses? There's a time to be born and there's a time to go. What is important is what landmark you left behind when you leave. That's what I'm always talking about. Uh, and so that we used to call him um, Dr. Sonio Jigo, I said, I remember vividly those days I used to go to complete uh, football company in Okota. You know, I would check from your father to Okota. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it would be somewhere, always very quiet. They had one small TV. Uh, try to remember it. I remember it now. One German TV, 14 is black and white. You know, I will read foreign magazines. You can stay there from Monday to night, Esso will not talk to anyone. Hardly will talk. But the end result, the, what it was churning out, you know, we remember him for giving us something we'll never forget. Um, there's only one complete football. There's only one complete, uh, what do you call it now? Sports. Complete sports. You know, open that road. Today's sport followed, sporting life followed, and so many. So, a pioneer. You know, won't forget him anymore. And of course, for Fabio Lanico commentaries, we're still looking for another Fabio. You know, we haven't seen any. Um, the last time we worked together, I worked for a beverage company um, trying to put together the Challenge Cup, the FA Challenge Cup. The beverage company was the major sponsor. Um, and while I was looking, I was just thinking one day, concept girls, okay, for those who have followed the FA Cup, for, by, for Fabio Lanico I brought him, then I got a reward suit. So week in week, and we worked for six months together. You know, we were recording at, the, at the Digitrack, and it was syndicated across Nigeria. That was the closest, closest myself and Pa people, and I paid him very well, you know. Um, when he turned 60 a few days ago, I wanted to talk to him. I called his number. He didn't pick. The song picked on my radio show. And he spoke at length about that. We didn't know that it was good. It was good. He died uh, some 24 hours later. Uh, these are people who left behind, you know, landmarks, shoes so big for people to feel. But like I said, the time to, to be born and the time to go. What's your advice for people who are interested in going into sports and journalism? Because uh, many people are looking at, you know, many people have added there as a role model. They know that they're following your path. And some of them, as you said earlier, and I picked the point, you mentioned about learning after people that have been there, that have seen it all. How can you advise those that are interested in picking a career how to sports and journalism? Um, well, I will start by saying that um, the internet has become a demon to this generation. The advantages that you find using the internet as are enormous, very positive, you know, the attributes that you can get, but we're taking the wrong side of it. Um, if you want to be a sport journalist and be successful, there are two different things. You can be a sport journalist, no problem. Today we have one million and one sport journalists. Some of them cannot write, some of them cannot speak good English. Some don't even understand what news is. You don't know anything about product. If you want to be a journalist, you must have more than a head knowledge of everything. You can produce, you can direct. If anybody can get in front of the camera and talk. You get what I'm saying? But what do you know about production? What do you know about the business of sports journalism? As it were. We don't. What we do these days, you have a mobile phone. You're okay, let's spot your life. That's what we do. You must be mentored. I'm not saying look up to somebody. I'm saying walk up to somebody and say, Sir, I've been following you. I want to be my mentor. I want to learn from you. You know, why 
and how you got to where we are today. Today's generation don't want to be mentored. Today's generation don't want to learn. Today's generation don't want to put in the hard work. I was going to NTA every Saturday. To go to NTA, I have, I have to sell bottles. Only go there. Once I hear that, I will go and go buy bottles. Mm. I would have packed bottles from different corners, different houses. I would sell. What am I looking for? Money to go to NTA. I will gather newspapers like this. A bookie will come and press it down. If it's high, like that, okay, I have a, maybe 60 naira. He will press it down. It comes to 20 naira. I need to, I will enter Molwe when they were still Molwe. Take me to oh, should you, should you, you know, jump down. I'm, sometimes hanging, I'm wearing a suit. I only had one suit, one shoe, one shirt, one tie. That was I wore that suit for one whole year. You know what I'm saying? And that was what I, There were times that it rained, and we would be, have you ever worn a suit? Maybe some say it was a coat I was wearing then. A coat. And what that rain beats you. It gathers here. Mm -hmm. It's like you're carrying load. I will run into the AC in the entire room at the The AC will hit me so that the thing will dry. Then I go on air. That was the price I had to pay. You know, for our thing. And to tell you the journey, I didn't get on master spot as, as an anchor person. As they, they used to say I was a color. Mm. I mean, those who understand TV will tell you what color is. That means there's something valid you add, but you are dispensable. Mm. That's that's it. Sometimes I will get to NTA, one, two, three weeks, I will not go on air. Maybe a guest is there or something, something, but I'll just be there. I'm fulfilled that I went there. When they want to take pictures, I will come forward and take pictures and go. They will not pay me one time. To this generation, it's about money, money. No hard work is the money that we see. I work, I, I, in this office where I am now, this is, this was today's spot. I occupy the hotel room today. In this office, I slept here three good months. I did go home. Publishing first edition, second edition of today's spot. What I've just said, you can confirm for a maker one. We were sleeping together in this same, this particular place. Three old months. In this office, I was suspended. There was a day I was sick and I came, I sent a message that I was sick. My boss said, if I could send a message that I was sick, that means I was strong enough to come to the office. I was suspended. I was asked, who will do your job? In journalism, where your work stops is where the other man's own starts. If you're an editor, you have to do it. If you don't do it, who will do it for you? It's only the reason that I realized that there's nothing like I'm going on a Christmas break. <laughs> you can, so, and it's only the reason I realized, I knew that there was no, this is my result of time. It's in the reason I realized that I knew, fact, that you don't tell somebody, I will close by five. Production can take you anywhere. And you must work. And another lesson, Bobasi taught us, that if you collect money from administrators, you will never make it. They will disrespect you. You have no respect where they are. I have said it on camera, I have said it everywhere. I have never bothered an aeroplane paid for by the Nigerian Football Federation. I've been a journalist for 33 years. I've never bothered an aeroplane paid for by the Nigerian Football Federation. The closest was 2016, when we went to Spain to study football club management. La Liga paid for that trip. Not the Nigerian Football Federation, not even the league in Nigeria. And I refused to go. It took Sheo Diko to say, no, it's La Liga that paid. It's La Liga. It's, it's a partnership between the Nigerian Professional Football League and La Liga. That was only on that basis that I afforded that play. Today, with due respect, the president of Nigerian Football Federation, Amaji, when he sees me, he calls me a bad copy, and I call him Amaji. Some of my colleagues can go and say, sir, the way you dress is the way they will address you. That's what it is. 
She will be quiz man. Everybody, I've said it, every administrator is put in like this, my friend. I did football administration at some point. I said, what else can I do? I decided to found a wrestling club. I met a wrestling club, so you are aware of that. And what I was doing, I was like, what else do I do? I decided to also set up a basketball team, MFM women basketball team. We are the vice champions of basketball in Nigeria. Three weeks ago, we won another tournament somewhere in the world. So there's nothing you're going to tell me. A few months ago, I was part of the NFL Football Reform Committee to reform Nigerian football. How many journalists do you have in Nigeria? So many. And they said, God, please. Shay Akumi called me and he said, that's the vice president of Nigeria. I said, please, he wants. I said, sir. I will not, I don't want these things. He said, there's a reason, there's a value that you have that we can do. And that's how I got my board. Even though our reform committee, committee report was charged in Bini City by those people, I've told them that they have touched the tiger's tail. But when the time is right, I'm going to tell Nigerians what we had on that document that could change Nigerian football. But some selfish people, you know, decided to tear that down. You know, I always pray this for myself, and I pray it for you, that your life must carry value. And when your life carries value, nobody can rubbish you. So that's how God has taken me to where I am today. Hard work, believing in God, absolutely. You will fall sometimes. You can't be on top all the time. But each time you fall, remember, it's not you staying on that ground of values. It's how quickly. Just like that.